Toyota Tacoma wireless accessory controller relocation and wiring change. Well, good morning everybody. How are you today? That's right, today I'm gonna be changing the location of the wireless accessory controller, this little thing right here. Um, I did have it sitting on top of the uh, battery, or the fuse cover rather, uh, right here. And I never liked it there, I don't know, it just didn't look right there. So I'm actually going to move it over here. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And then also, they provide a wire. You can either hook directly to the battery, which means that current is continuously flowing to the unit, and that can drain your battery. And if you saw the previous video, I did have a dead battery. So to alleviate that, I'm going to just add a fuse, if you will, and go ahead and connect that in the fuse box to a circuit that's only on when the ignition is on. That way there won't be a constant flow of uh, current or power to that wireless controller unit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece off here. This is just a, a cover. It's held on by these little push pin things across the top and across the bottom. And then I'm going to mount uh, the bracket, which is actually right here, um, on top. You guys can see right there and then I'll mount the wireless accessory controller on top of this bracket. Um, I did trim it a little bit, needed to save room so I could still pull the engine cover off, which should be okay. Okay, pulling this piece off is pretty simple. You just need a little flathead screwdriver. You just pop up these uh, little plug things here, or push pins, I guess. They just come off like this. You just pry up the little center part right here and then they just pull right out. Pretty simple to do. So let's go ahead and get the rest out of here. There we go. This should just pull right off. And it does. Um, pretty easy. It's just a cover to protect things under here, I guess. Not quite sure. Okay, now what I'm going to do, and actually in doing this, I'm going to eliminate the push pin right here so there won't be one there anymore, I don't think. We'll see, probably not. But this is going to be mounted with some bolts just like that, so I have to drill a couple holes through here, and then I'll bolt down the wireless controller itself, and then we'll reinstall this and get the wiring done. Make sure you don't put your fingers behind here. Actually had some windows installed about a week ago and the guy actually drilled right into his hand. Not, not a good thing. So make sure you keep your digits in hand out of the way. Make sure our screw fits. Fits perfectly. Awesome. Okay, I did go ahead and uh, get these are nylon threaded or nylon inserts rather on these nuts. So that should hold everything in place I think. So we should simply be able to put this on. I'm going to check and see if I have any washers for this. Okay, did have some washers, so we'll go ahead and put those on. Don't know that I really need them, but eh, better safe than sorry. Go ahead and get this nylon threaded nut going on there, and then I'll have to crank that down. Put the other side on. Okay, we've got them on. It's bolted on. Everything is together on here. You can see the screws down there I put in, um, as well as on the back. Uh, if we focus, there you go. You may notice some blue on there. I did use some blue Loctite. Obviously, I don't want these to loosen up, so um, everything is secured on there now. So it's a matter of putting it back in the truck and then making the connections on the battery. Okay, one more thing I honestly almost forgot to do. I put a couple holes here because I want to secure these out of the way right there. So I'm going to run a zip tie through there and uh, 
use it to secure those up against the edge so that they're out of the way. These are two extras I'm not using right now, but I might in the future. And then these, of course, will run underneath over to the accessories. Okay, there's a look at what I'm talking about here. Just one of these tied up against the edge so that they're out of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and get these pens put back in, these little push pen things. I think this will be just fine. Okay, that's as many, and remember, I left the one underneath the unit here off, so I don't think it's a big deal. It's pretty firm on there, so I think it's going to be okay. Uh, the one thing I was concerned about is whether or not I'd be able to actually uh, get the engine cover off, and it is tight, but I can get it off. Just kind of have to finagle it a little, so not a big deal. I'm not stopping uh, the engine cover from coming off and that was one of my concerns so I think we're okay there now um, I just need to run the wires over beside the battery there are the uh, two that I need to plug into and then of course make the connection back to uh, the battery the ground over here and then put my ignition wire which is the yellow wire uh, on the unit here um, into one of these fuse areas so that this unit will only come on when uh, the truck is actually running or when the ignition is on anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and do that next. Okay, we've got it all wired up. Let me tell you, I had a little bit of a startle. I heard a bunch of noise coming from under the hood. This is just one of those things, full disclosure, right? I had a click, 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 a bunch of noise, like something was, I don't know, weird. Um, what it was, I had these plugs I haven't connected up yet. Now they were laying down here uh, in front of the fan, and the fan blade was going around hitting these. Uh, fortunately, they were barely touching, so it didn't hurt anything. I do need to plug those in yet. Um, I did test it. Just by flipping the switch, when you flip the switches, this uh, will light up if anything happens. It did not light up, which means there's no power. Um, as I said, I turned the truck on and they did light up, so I'm good. What I used is the, uh, right here, if you guys can see, um, I added, uh, I used an Adafuse, and this is the INJ, I believe. Let me make sure I'll tell you here. Um, that is the INJ. 10 amp. You guys can see it right, well, if it wasn't fuzzy, there you go, uh, right here in your fuse panel. So there's your fuse panel, and there's the one I used, INJ. So I have heard that that will cycle about every four hours or so, but that's okay. I mean, if it pops on every four hours, I'm okay with that, no big deal. Uh, but we've got everything hooked up. Uh, obviously, we've got the positive, the negative, or the ground here, I should say. And I'm kind of checking this with you guys as I go. So here's the ground from the unit. Not really digging how it goes across the battery here, but I don't have enough room um, to put it right down here below. Maybe I'll extend that later because I don't really like it on the battery. It means I'd have to disconnect it if I need to change the battery. Eh. Uh, the power comes up right here, not a big deal, that fits really well, and then this yellow ignition wire, as I mentioned, goes over here to the uh, Adafuse and is going to control this unit or stop it from being on all the time, which is what I want. So, one more thing I have to do, uh, the wire over here goes across the edge of the fuse box. Um, you can kind of pull the fuse panel apart to stick it up in through. I'm not really big on messing with the fuse panel any more than I have to or already have. Uh, so I'm just going to notch out the lid right here on the corner where it goes through. Shouldn't really make a, a big deal. And then uh, be able to secure the, the fuse lid box or the fuse box lid um, without pinching this wire. So I'm going to do that next. We'll get everything connected and then uh, we'll have just a minute of a light show here. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, got it all done. Everything's buttoned up as good as it's going to be. Um, I think it's fairly tidy. You guys will have to fill me in on that. Um, located up here on the front. This is a much better place for it. Got the wires tied down over here. Got everything coming down and tied down under here away from that fan. 
Uh, the top is back on, did notch it here on the side. I know you can't see it there. So we need to fire up the truck and then we're gonna hit the lights. You guys can see right there it was a success everything is done finally it took me now I did take my time but it probably took me a couple hours to do this between relocating the bracket and rewiring and uh, plugging it into the fuse box splicing the add a fuse on you know all the stuff you have to do but I'm happy with it now very happy with where it is anyway leave a comment let me know what you think did I pick the best place to put it I'd be curious. I didn't see any other place. Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay lit out there. Bye.